Hello, everybody. This is Lauren Hershey. I'm the senior pastor at Word of Life Church, and we hope this podcast blesses you and helps bring you closer to God. Enjoy today's message. Hallelujah. Anybody know what condensed means? Condensed means every all the goody is in there, but it's just a smaller package. <laughs> so how many of you will trust God with me, believe God with me for a condensed message this morning that's got everything in it by the utterance of the Holy Ghost that your heart needs? Can you agree with me on that? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for giving me utterance this morning and helping me to... to Hallelujah. Thank you for a condensed version in Jesus' name, but still powerful, still nutritious. Amen. Amen. Well, the last few weeks we've been talking about harvest. Our summer theme is the life of faith, and we're especially talking about harvest right now, how to harvest, because uh, harvest is the word the Lord gave us for the whole year, harvest. And so we've seen in Genesis chapter 28, chapter 8, verse 22, we read this out of the, the Bible in basic English, says, while the earth goes on, seed time and getting in of the grain, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, will not come to an end. So you all say seed time and harvest. Sowing and reaping is the granddaddy principle of everything. There is a word called the word is archetype, and rather than bring it out later, let me bring it out now. Arch, archetype, if you think of architect, someone that builds or designs something. Arche is the Greek word. It means the beginning, the origin, the foundation of something. Arch, and archetype is a founding basic idea or principle that, uh, that really sets the pattern for things. And controls things. It's the, the it, it's a pattern. Okay, just like in a, you might have a certain book that is the archetype of that genre of literature. You know, my Indiana Jones would be kind of the the structure of that movie would be the archetype of the adventure movie. You know, and uh, and we're going to find out that Abraham is the archetype of faith. He's our foundation. He's our pattern. What God did through Abraham and in Abraham is the pattern for you and me as believers. Now, in, in talking about harvest, we found out that the secret, Jesus, Jesus said, if you don't understand this, you don't get any of it. Because this is that granddaddy principle, sowing and reaping. And we saw in Luke 5 that the secret to financial blessing and miracles and provision is whatever he says, do it. You know, nevertheless, you know, I've worked all night. I'm tired. But when you say it, Lord, I'm going to take it to heart. I'm going to believe it. I'm going to obey it. Can we get an amen? We're talking about the life of faith. See, faith deals with unseen things. Faith, we look at things that are not seen and live for those, not for the things that are seen. And when we step out in faith, it causes those unseen things to transition into our natural realm. That's how they come over. They come over by faith, by faith. And so uh, Mary said to you, to the disciples, to the people with the water pots, whatever Jesus says to you, whatever he says to you, do it. And what, it, what happened? A miracle took place. How? Through their act of faith. Their act of faith. Looking beyond what we see and feel and living by what we've heard from God and believe. Acting on that. And always remember this, faith is never just saying I believe something. Faith is always action. It's always action. That's what makes faith, faith. That's what enabled Peter to walk on the water. That's what turned the water into wine. That's what helped that woman with the issue of blood get well. She didn't just hear something when she heard of Jesus. She came in the press behind and made her way through. For she said in her heart, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be whole. But she didn't just lay on the couch and say, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be whole. If I just touch his clothes, I'll be whole. She was believing right, but it wasn't faith until she got out there and did what took her. Come on, church. 
That's till she took action. And that's what we're bringing out. That, that sowing and reaping, how many would agree with me? Sowing and reaping is biblical. But there's misconceptions that need to be corrected. And there's faith that needs to be increased. And so that's why I'm preaching these things. I thought I'd go a whole different direction when we set this theme for the summer. I didn't realize that God was going to have me go here, but he did. Now, we've learned in Ecclesiastes 11.4 that it's possible to look at the... Okay, let me ask you. Is it possible for a farmer, a gardener, or us, even in spiritual things, is it possible for us to look at the circumstances, the clouds and the wind, and not go out and sow? And is it possible for us to have sown and God to have grown it and a crop be in the field and us not go out and harvest it? Yeah, by looking at circumstances, by looking at those things, by being idle, by being lazy, by being moved by other influences, taking those things to heart rather than what God said, letting them supersede the word of the Lord. It can keep us on the couch, in the house, And really keep us poor. And something was occurring to me this morning is that God gives seed to the sower. But what occurred to me this morning is the seed is so much smaller of a quantity than the harvest. Isn't that right? And most of the time from what I've seen of seed, corn seed, garden seed, squash seed, the seed's kind of shriveled up and ugly. Come on now, I'm not, not... putting down God's seed, but it doesn't look at all like the beautiful plant. So we just need to realize that God gives seed to the sower. Let's not make the mistake of thinking that's the harvest. Well, it's not enough. Well, the seed, what's the, 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 the amount in the seed packet is never enough for the harvest all year. You got tomato seeds, you'll never get... You'll never have enough seed there if you process that to get all the salsa and all the soup and all the the sauce and everything. You have to plant, and then what? God grows it, and then we harvest it. Amen? So God help us. May God help us to see what we have in our hands for what it is. Instead of trying to cook and eat the seed, I think, (laughs) I got it stuck in my teeth. And it didn't go very far. Well, yeah, let's wise up that what is this? God help us to see the seed for what it is and have enough confidence in God and understanding to recognize what to do with it and then realize it's seed, time, and harvest. So patience is called for. Amen? Amen. Let's recognize it's possible to never plant never, and, or it's fail to reap because you're looking at things. Or you could be a person of faith. You could be a man of faith. You could be a woman of faith who, dis, who doesn't regard the clouds, doesn't regard the obstacles, doesn't regard, well, I got this coming up and the insurance to pay and I, I got to take care of the kids. Actually, she said, well, you know, you got to put your kids first. Whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute. There's only one first place, Right? And if your kids are first place, God's not. Now, I know 2023, as we worship kids today, it's, that's a hard thing to hear. But if we're going to have the blessing of God in our life, we have to realize that nobody, no thing gets first place but God. And anytime you put something up there, I've noticed this any time that you, you, you're making an idol out of something, and any time you do that, it doesn't have the character to handle it. You know, it's like in athletics, someone's gifts, someone's skills can put them in a place where their character can't keep them. And if we, by misunderstanding, put something, our kids or something else, our career, whatever, satisfaction, ego, strokes, whatever, finances, whatever, if we put anything in first place, it does not have the character to keep it where we put it. And it'll corrupt. And it won't produce. And then we sometimes wonder, well, why isn't this working? It's because the master principle 
in all of financial and material things and all of life is this, God gets first place. Put God first place. Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first. You know, say first. First, the kingdom of God, his ways of doing and being, his rule in our lives and in the earth. Seek that first. Seek his rule first. And then all these things will be added to you. And we saw last week what happened with the people of Israel in Haggai's day. That they were saying, it's not time. It's not time to put God's house first. But they were, they were putting, making sure they had the granite, they had the tile, they had the LED lights, they had everything of that day. God said, is it time for you to leave? Is it time for you to live in your paneled houses? Paneling was in style that day. It is time for you to live in your paneled houses and my house lays waste. 16 years earlier, they had laid the foundation, done nothing with it because of the opposition that had come. The winds of culture had blown a different direction, so they just let it go. Then they're wondering why, when it comes to their lives, they're looking for much and it's coming to little. And what they do bring home only goes half as far as they thought. They take one step forward, get knocked two steps back. And, God, and they're saying, God, why is this? They, he's saying, because you put your own stuff first. And you've, rend- you've, you've relegated my stuff to secondary or third or beyond that. Are you with me this morning? The master principle of all these things we're talking about is put God first. Put God first. Now, I, I want to turn with me quickly to Haggai chapter 2. And we'll just, we'll pick up right here. Haggai chapter 2. So God has spoken to this. And realize that what I'm sharing with you this morning is not an effort. It's not, is not my carnal effort to get you to give more money to Word of Life Church. Now understand, I got a human side too. And I could get carnal. (laughs) But that's not where this is coming from. What I'm sharing with you this morning is out of God's desire for you to be blessed and prospered. Because we're children of God, right? You know, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, right? The silver is his and the gold is his, right? and, And we're his children, right? And everything he has belongs to us, right? So we're well able to give in offerings. We're well able to do that. So I'm not twisting anybody's arm. You're going to learn this having three children. That people do what they want to do. Amen? Anybody have kids? Especially when you... Okay. Our kids don't go to school dances. I said that several times from the pulpit. And then the youth pastor came up to me after church one day and said, Pastor Lauren, I think you would want to know this. Um, one of your kids, and named his name because he had a bedroom in the basement and the egress, a window. He's been sneaking out and going to school dances. How many understand I had kind of egg on my face? But it brought home a lesson to me that, you know, people get to the point where it doesn't matter what you say, really doesn't matter what they say, they're going to do what they want to do. Amen? So you're going to do what you want to do about the offering. You know, you're not going to do what I tell you to do. I, I, I had to die to that years ago when I was still thinking, you know, I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor. Pastor of a flock. I'm the shepherd. When I say they revere me, they receive <laughs> And they do what I do. Oh, man. No, people, they do what I say. I still try to teach, still try to lead, but I've just become down to earth. You're going to do what you want to do. And you're going to sow what you want to sow, and you're going to reap what you want to reap. Together, if we'll, so let's go on. Can I get an amen? Haggai, Haggai chapter 2, he said this to them, verse 18, Consider now from this day forward. From the 24th day of the month, from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. He's saying, consider it. 
from this day that, I, that you woke up to this, from this day that you made the choice to put my stuff first, he said, consider this, is the seed still in the barn? As yet the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have not yielded fruit, but from this day I will bless you. And guys, when you make the decision, when we make the decision to put God first and do with his stuff and, and the stuff he gives us, what worship him with it and obey him with it, man, his blessing will come upon us by putting him first. Can I get an amen? And from that very day, and it's a heart thing. It's a heart thing, and that heart thing shows up in your actions. Amen? Yeah. So it's a heart thing. Now, last week we talked about the fact that, that you can have, you can grow a crop. You can plant the seed. God bless it. It'll grow. And, say, well, and, understand that, and understand these are natural things as well as spiritual things. It all works the same. And God uses the natural things. To help us grip, grasp, and understand the spiritual things. Well, I thought it was about, I thought harvest was about people. It is. It's about reaching people. It's about helping people. It's about getting out there and, and, but you need to understand that still, like someone said, love makes the world go round, but money greases the wheels. And you know as well as I do in your own lives. There's a lot of things that you would like to do, a lot of things you would like to give, a lot of things you would like to provide somebody else, but you have to have the money to be able to do it. Isn't that right? And so the financial material stuff comes with it. And understand something, that as we, as God, that these things of receiving, harvesting material things, financial things, Using your faith and how faith works and growing your faith in these areas is spiritual kindergarten. This is not the pinnacle of maturity. This is spiritual kindergarten. And in the use of material things and you learning how to harvest material things, God is teaching you the principles that you are going to walk in to harvest spiritual things. Like the souls of people coming to Christ. The souls of people come to church with you. The souls of people, people and your neighbors and your friends, God's showing up in their neighborhood. How's that happen? We walk by faith. We receive by faith. We live by faith. We don't just wait for God to do it when God... See, listen, we cannot leave up to God to do what God has left up to us. I think I'll say that again. We cannot leave up to God to do what God has left up to us. We cannot wait for God, leave it up to God to go next door to our neighbor and pray for them. We, or, or even just go over and be a guy to them. Or be a girl to them. Amen. To show them what Jesus looks like in this world. To just be normal. Right? And just, you know, we can't leave it up to God to go when, when, and do what God told us to do. He told us to go into the world. Right? And, and show and proclaim. You know, let our lights shine before men so they may see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. We can't leave it to God to do that. I went out and looked at our squash plant this morning. This is our weekly update. <laughs> it's now <laughs> grown over the end of the elevated garden bed. And there's about eight new blossoms out there and, and other new, new squash growing. You know, another next phase of harvest. And the bees are out there this morning just pollinating, going in and out of the blossoms. And I'm thinking about battering and frying squash blossoms and, and eating... And it'll be great, but I can't sit on the couch and wait for God to go out and carry those squash in. Say it with me. You can't leave up to God what God's left up to me. And that means the amount of sowing that you do, and that means the amount of reaping that you do. Say it with me. I'm going to be a great sower. 
and I'm going to be a top-notch reaper. Top reaper. Hallelujah. Now, let me share just in a few minutes. I mentioned Abraham. And last week we got to the place. Lord, how do I do this? Okay, let's keep moving. Everybody say condensed. <laughs> how many of you also realize you can sow, the crop can grow, and then something can happen. Bugs can get in. The destroyer can get in and, sow, and, and destroy your crop. And so you need blessing from God, and you need protection from God, right? Deuteronomy 11, verse 13 through 15, he said, If you will obey me, if you'll do what I tell you to do, somebody would say, well, yeah, but that's under the law. Listen, how many of you understand that we're still supposed to obey God? Yes. All right, not because of a law, but because he's writing his word on our heart. See, the wages of sin is death. Sin will kill you. Sin will pay you. It'll pay you death. See, but I'm a Christian. I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. Will you go out and rob a bank or shoot your neighbor or commit adultery and just, just see if God keeps consequences from happening in your life? Do you go out and sow? You're going to reap. Well, I'm not going to reap because my mama will pay the bill. Well, you're sowing, she's reaping, and hopefully she'll wise up and quit paying your bill so that you experience the realities of life. We've got to quit rescuing people. Boy, it's quiet in here. We've got to quit rescuing people. Why? Because when you start pulling the padding out of the nest, Mom... And let little Johnny, who's 42 years old and still living in your basement, begin to experience the pain of not growing up and assuming his responsibility, you'll find that reality is a great ally for you getting Johnny out of your basement. <laughs> but as long as you keep rescuing your children, listen, listen, whenever we do for somebody what they can and do, should do for themselves, Whenever we do for somebody what they can and should do for themselves, we subsidize their, their weakness. Whenever we do for someone what they can and should do for themselves, like think, we cripple them. That's, wow, I didn't expect to go this way. You know, when Dad and I used to be painters. Dad was a painter. We specialized in finishing new homes. We'd paint barns. We'd paint houses. On Sunday afternoon, we'd go for Sunday drives, and, and invariably, we'd be going down gravel roads or in towns, and Dad would say, yeah, we painted that one. We painted that one. This one we did. Yeah, that's so-and-so's place. We did that back in so-and-so with kind of a pride about him. We'd walk through houses that we finished the woodwork in. And I noticed when we walked through doorways, Dad would be caressing the door frames. <laughs> I mean, they were smooth as a baby's butt. We were good. We were. We were good. God made us good. And I loved it. And, you know, why did we do that? It's because when you make something, you leave a little bit of yourself in everything you make. When God made you, he, made, he left a little bit of himself in you. You're valuable. You're precious. And so are all those other people out there. And now you're saved. Now you're redeemed. And you've got a new life. You're even more beautiful. You're a child of God. Can I get an amen, church? And God is sending you out with himself in you, guiding you, directing you. Why? Because there's still people out there that he loves, that he's got a little bit of the touch of himself in, and he wants them to receive life and get lifted and come into abundant life like you have. Can I get an amen, church? Hallelujah. How's that for condensed? Now, Pastor Joy is going to come, and she's going to tell you about somebody that's coming in in the month of August because... Because God's word to us this year is harvest, and there's people out there that... How many of you are glad to be a believer today? 
Are you glad to have the Holy Spirit touch in your life? Even if things are not going real well, are you glad to have hope that they're going to get better? And glad to have some kind of equipment from the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you that, to help you be blessed. Amen. And to be a blessing. Can I get a bigger amen? Can a brother get a bigger amen up in here? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Abraham was the prototype. He was the first tither. God said, bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and put me to the test in this and see if I won't open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing larger than you can contain. Hallelujah. And Abraham was a tither. And if you want to... and, and uh, Man, I think I'll just... I think I'll just quit right here. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you for your move in this house today. And we acknowledge you, Lord. I sense there's some in this place that would would like to just make a fresh commitment to the Lord of putting him first and opening their hearts to him. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open unto me, I will come into him. And sup with him and he with me. God's ready to bring a mighty blessing into your life. But who knocks? Jesus. And he's knocking on the door of your hearts. Who opens? Say, I do. And if if you're ready today, I'd like you to just repeat this after me. Just say, God in heaven, my father, my heart is stirred. I hear you speaking to me. And right now, I open the door of my heart. I put you first place. Help me to understand what that looks like in my life. And help me to help others walk in your love and in your blessing. I trust you for your protection. I'm going to be a tither. As I learn about it and faith grows, I'll be with you. You'll be with me and we'll be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed today's podcast, there are a couple things that I would like you to do. Hit the subscribe button, rate, and review the podcast. And if you'd like to invest in helping us reach more people for Christ, head over to mywordoflife.church and click the online giving button. Thanks again for joining us and we'll see you again next time.